Community Church. We're so glad you joined us here today, online and in person. Please join us in praise and worship as we sing, I Love God. Bienvenidos a todos. Estamos muy felices de ser reunido a Community Church. En línea y en persona, por favor, únanse mientras cantamos Yo Amo Dios.
for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious de nuestro Padre Israel, desde siempre y para siempre. Tuyos son, Señor, la grandeza y el poder, la gloria, la victoria y la majestad. Tuyo es todo cuanto hay en el cielo y en la tierra. Tuyo también es el reino y tú estás por encima de todo. De ti proceden la riqueza y el honor. Tú lo gobiernas todo En tus manos está la fuerza y el poder. Y eres tú quien engrandece y fortalece a todos. Por eso, Dios nuestro, te damos gracias y a tu glorioso nombre disfrutamos alabanzas.
to the mind. At this time, we will play the xylophone selection called Cover Joe.
confession. As you look for Jeremiah chapter 18 verses 1 through 4, let me make my confession early out. All right. Every last one of these young people who are members of the New Beginning Church has come through music. <laughs> I said they come through music. All right, well, preacher, why is that a confession? Because they haven't come through my great preaching. <laughs> <laughs> they come through music. And uh, the Bonham Report says that only 7% of the people that go to church go to church because the preacher has such a dynamic message. 
47% of the people who are in church are in church because they have friends in church. They have things to do in church. So that's why these young people have come, and I'm glad about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lord. Amen. Call your attention to Jeremiah chapter 18. In the Old Testament, the book is Jeremiah. You don't mind standing for the reading of the word if you can. The Old Testament, the book is Jeremiah, chapter 18, verses 1 through 4. When you found it, you will discover these words. I'm reading from the New King James Version. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was making something at the wheel. Yeah. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. I want to talk about the fact that I need God. God, make me over. All right, all right, all right. God, make me over. If you were to confess this morning, you would have to confess that you need God. It doesn't matter how holy you are. It doesn't matter how long you have been holy. The fact of the matter this morning is you need God. You thought it was the alarm clock that woke you up this morning. But it really, really was God. You thought that it was honey nudging you and telling you to get up and move around. But if you were to tell the truth this morning, it was almighty God. All right. you, thought, you thought that it was because you got good sense mm. that you made your way to the house of the Lord this morning. The fact of the matter is the sense you got, <laughs> the sense you have, uh -huh. the sense you may gain uh -huh. will all come from the Lord. If the Lord doesn't keep your mind, mm, right. your mind will not be kept. That's right, that's right. It is God who has made us. And besides him, there is none other. That's, right. mm -hmm. that's why the psalmist says, bless the Lord, O my soul. Yeah, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Yeah. It's because God is the one who blesses us. Right. And we are the blessed and honor, praise God. Yes, yes. The psalmist says that we are wonderfully and beautifully made. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great is the hand and works of God, and this I know right well. Mm -hmm. It is God the creator who has made us, and he has blessed us one more time. Uh -huh. The psalmist says, O oh Lord our Lord, mm -hmm. how excellent is your name. Yes. In all the earth, all right, all right. who is man that you are mindful of him? Yes. That you created him just a little lower than the angel. All right. The psalmist realized that if it had not been for the Lord, yes. we would not be present today because God is our maker. Yes, he is our creator. Mm -hmm. He is God. And because he's God, we need to recognize him as God. Uh -huh. We need to honor him as God. Yeah. We need to speak of him as God simply because he wasn't voted in as God. No. He wasn't selected as God. No. He wasn't elected as God. He just always has been God all by himself. Yeah, yeah. Who wouldn't serve a God yeah, no. like this? Yeah. All other small G gods have to bow down to our God, yeah, yeah. Yahweh God. Yeah. 
Jehovah God, yeah. Adonai God. Yeah. They have to bow down yeah. to our God. Yeah. Yeah. There is no God like our God. And it is God who breathed breath into the first man, Adam. It is God that allows us to lay down and get back up. I told you last two weeks ago that the back home, they would say it like this, God, I thank you. That the bed I laid down in was not my pool and board. And the sheets I rolled up in was not my winding sheets. It's the saints of God that's willing to give glory to God for God, what God has already done. He is the great God. Jeremiah is, is in the book. And Jeremiah, as a young man, was called to preach the word and tell stiff-necked folk about the word of God. I don't know, not at this church, but at other churches in Houston, they have some stiff-necked folks. And they don't want to hear God. And they don't want to hear what God has to say. As a matter of fact, they get mad at God. That's how it was in Jeremiah's day. So he calls. Jeremiah and says don't be afraid of their faces. He says to Jeremiah whatever you do tell them the word of God and tell them the word just as I show you the word. So when we get to verse 1 in chapter 18 Jeremiah is in conversation with God. My first point to you this morning every now and then you need to have a conversation with the Almighty God. Yeah. yeah, prayer is a dialogue. Prayer is when you talk to God and God talks to you. You got to have a conversation with God. You have to talk to God. If you got folk on your trail that's misusing you, you need to talk to God about it. If you have people that are talking bad about you, you need to talk to God about it. If you have situations around you out of your control, you need to talk to God about it. So in verse number one, it says that Jeremiah heard the word of the Lord. Uh -huh. Jeremiah heard the word of the Lord, and the word of the Lord says distinctly, arise. You see, when the Bible talks about arising, it means to get up. It means to start moving. It means to do what you have been called to do because God says arise, it's time for you to move. Right. Young people drag their foot, feet when they move. Ah. Young people move slow when they move. Young people have their bridges down to their to their groin area when they move. So even if they want to run, they can't run. But when God says move, it's sure enough, it's time for us to move. In Jeremiah chapter 18, Jeremiah says that God talks to him and he talks to God. And in your conversation with God, you need to let God know how you really feel. You know, you need to let him know how you feel because he's an all-knowing God. He knows everything. He, he sees everything. He knows it before you even think it. So you might as well tell him, tell God all about it. That's right. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord. The word came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, arise and go down to the potter's house. The potter's house. You see, it is a symbol of mankind and God. It is God who has made us mm -hmm. and not we ourselves. <laughs> Many times we carry ourselves as if we think we made ourselves. Right. Uh, there are some who are narcissistic in their ways and, and they think the world rotates around them. They think the world owes them something. They think the world ought to give them things. But I want to tell you today that it is God that makes us who we are and it is God that we ought to honor. The psalmist says in Psalm 24 that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Yeah. They that dwell therein, everything belong to him. The cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. Matter of fact, the hill belongs to God. Yeah. Yeah. It is God who has made us and not we ourselves. So I say to you, you need to obey mm -hmm. the word of God. Yeah, you need to hear the word of God. You need to obey the word of God. 
And if you're going to be successful in life, young people, if you're going to do great things in life and be honored by the Holy Spirit, you need to obey the word of God. You need to get up. It says, arise. It says, arise and, and go down to the potter's house. And when you get down to the potter's house, I will speak to you or I will show you some things. I will speak to you. I will show you some things that you've never seen before. You see, young people, young people have come to the conclusion that they can make some things happen. But let me tell you, you need God to make some things happen. All right, all right. I know, I know, I've been to school. I know teachers don't teach like they used to. I know they don't respect like they used to. I know some of them are there to get a paycheck, but you need to tell God about it and obey the words of God. All right, all right. I know principles are not fair, and I know you're always right. I know your parents are, are old folk. I, I know the parents don't know what's going on. I, I know children come out the womb with an iPad, an Android phone, and an iPhone. I understand that, and I know you have to show them the way of life, but the bottom line is you need to obey God and walk with him and allow him to keep you because you cannot keep yourself. So you have to hear the word of God. You have to obey the word of God. And then you have to make sure you see what God is showing you. Don't miss what God is showing you. God is showing us stuff all around us. We ought to see the things that God is showing us. God is showing us things every single day. Killings like never before. The disease all over the place. Disrespectful young folk. People that would tell, young people that would tell their parents where to go. Well, Sister Ben and I didn't grow up like that. We couldn't tell our parents where to go because they showed us where to go. They used statements like this, I brought you into this world and I take you out of this world. They used statements like, that's not my child, but you are my child. And what I say going. We don't hear that in the 21st century. That went out with the 20th century. Children will look at their parents dead in their eye and say, I will not do it. Young people, I got to tell you today, God is showing you some things. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother. That your days will be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. God is showing us some things and we are seeing things like never before that we thought we would never see in our day. All right. so he says, go down to the potter's house. And when he got down to the potter house, there was a potter that was on the wheel. And the potter was making a bowl. The potter was making a cup. The potter was making something out of clay. You see, God is the pot. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And we are the clay. Amen. And it takes God to make us over and over again. Uh -huh. You see, we're saved. We're born again. We have salvation. We love the Lord. We're going to heaven anyhow. We love the Lord. We're on our way to heaven. But it's sanctification that God has to, to make us every single day. Salvation is a one-time experience. You invite Jesus Christ into your life. You're saved. You're on your way to heaven. It, you have to make sure you do the right thing while you're here. So you have salvation. But every day of our lives, we need sanctification. We need God to mold us. We need God to shape us. We need God to transform us. We need God over and over and over again to make us. So the text declares... Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was. I, my next point to you today is, if you look for God, you will find him. He's not lost. He hasn't taken a far journey. But if you look for him, you will find him. If you look for God, you will find God. He's looking out for you. He's making a way for you. And then if you look for God, you will find him. You need to understand God. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
understand who God is. The, the Bible says, the psalmist says, that God showed his ways unto Moses. Yeah, yeah. And he showed his mighty acts unto the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. What it says to us, both the leaders and the followers need to know who God is. Uh -huh. Now, first of all, the leader needs to know God's ways. Because the followers just want to see the blessings of God. The leader has to know what God looks forward to. The leader has to know how to handle the people, and he only knows how to handle the people by God, because they are God's people and not the men of God's people. Right. I think I'll say that again. Yeah. The people belong to God. Yeah. They don't belong to the men of God. Therefore, you don't hear me say my people, my folk. Because I don't own them. I haven't created them. I haven't made them. And I haven't died for them. Only God owns people. And because God is the one who owns the people, the people need to look to God. The people need to see God. The people need to watch God. Because God is moving about us. And we are sleeping on the job. Said today at Sunday school, for those of you who didn't make it because you had another appointment, uh, I said to them in Sunday school today, there's an all-out war going on. That's right. There's a battle going on. Battle. It's not a wrestling match. Yeah. It is a battle. It's an all-out onslaught. The yeah. devil is out to take your very life. It's a spiritual warfare. Uh -huh. And the devil doesn't care how young you are. Yeah. Matter of fact, he preys on the young. Here we are fighting in school over what should be taught. They don't want to teach the truth. They don't want children to know the truth. So they put laws out there. But they want children to know the perverted stuff that would lead them far away from God. A, a, a high school, a junior, a middle, a middle school had gym. And gym and PE in my day was basketball, volleyball, track, yeah. running. That's what gym was. Yeah. That's, right. That's, That's what PE was. Yeah. But there's a middle school hmm. where they show little children hmm. in middle school laying on the gym floor with AK 15s, oh, showing them how to shoot rifles hmm. at the age of 13, 14. They're showing them how to handle a gun. But they need to be showing them how to handle the word of God. Because it's the word of God that will keep us. It's the word of God that will strengthen us. It's a spiritual warfare going on. And we need to make sure that we are armed for the fight. He went down to the potter's house. And when he got to the potter's house, there was a potter making something on the wheel. And as he made something on the wheel, the potter noticed something. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the vessel that he made got marred. Uh -huh. it, it was some defects. Uh -huh. It was some problems. All right, all right. I can see myself on the wheel. That's right. Can you see yourself on the wheel? Yes. The potter made a vessel. The potter yes. made a bowl. The potter made a cup. The potter made a thing on the wheel. And the potter noticed that the wheel had a vessel on it that was marred. Yes. Right that was messed up. Yes. Had flaws. Uh -huh. Paul says it this way in Romans 3 and 23. For we all have sinned and we all have fallen short of God's glory. Let me just confess today. I'm marred. Yeah, yeah. I messed up. Yeah, yeah. I've fallen short. Yeah. I have sinned. Yeah. But thank God for the potter. Yeah, the potter kept moving. Yeah, yeah. The potter kept rotating the wheel. Yeah, yeah. He took the clay. And he started all over again. All over. That's what God did for me. Yeah. He took the same clay he had, yeah. had created. Yeah. He, he took yeah. the same vessel he had yeah. formed. He, he, he balled it up and he started over again. Over. Yeah. Somebody in this room need a new start. Yeah. Uh -huh. Somebody in this room need God to start it over for you again. Yeah. God is so merciful. Lord, yeah. God is so yeah. gracious yeah. that he's willing to start over again. Yeah. If your marriage is in a rut, God can start it over again. If your children are going astray, God can start it over again. If your community is being ravaged by thieves and burglars, God can start it over again. 
if your church just not doing the right thing, not preaching the right thing, not saying the right thing, people not living the right way, God can start it yeah. all over, yeah. over again. Yeah. Yeah. Went down to the potter's house, and there the potter was making something on the wheel. Mm -hmm. God knows how to make it. Yes. God knows how to put it together. Yes, he does. God knows where every nerve is. Mm -hmm. He knows where every muscle is. Yes, he, he knows where every default is. Yes, he knows where every struggle is. Mm -hmm. And there may be somebody struggling with something today. All right, and Lord, I just can't get it right. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, don't worry about getting it right. Come to Jesus. Jesus is the only one who can get it right. I, I know he's trying. I, Paul says it like this. And Paul, Paul the great apostle Paul. Paul the one who wrote 75% of the New Testament. Paul, a Holy Ghost filled Paul. A born again Paul. Paul says in Romans 7, every time I would to do good, evil is present with me. Every time I look around, I, I got the right thing on my heart. I got the right thing in my mind, you got the right thing in my head, but every time I turn around, something happened. A songwriter picked it up and said this. He says that every time I look around, something doesn't have to go wrong. Something can go right. Every time I look around, God keeps right on. Bless him. Bless him. He says that the clay was marred in the hand of the pot. You see, we can get super, super spiritual. And we can come to the point where we think we have arrived. Oh but look at what the text says. The text says that the clay was in the hand of the potter. Uh -huh. It says the clay was in the hand of the potter. Uh -huh. It says that the potter had the clay in his hand. Uh -huh. What it says to us today is we can be saved. Yeah. We can be born again yeah. and we can be woo, filled with his precious Holy Ghost and still have his shoes. The text says, the text says, yeah. it was in the hand of the potter. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't out of the potter's hands, it wasn't far away from the potter. It was in the hand of the potter. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, I know you're in the hand of God. Yeah. But while you're in the hand of God, we have not gotten to glory yet, so we still got issues. Yeah, yeah. And the thing about it, I can't call out your issues, and you can't call out my issues, because we all got issues. That's right. And check this out. We have issues that deserve tissues. As a matter of fact, we got issues that's holding us back, because if we did not have issues, we wouldn't be looking down our nose at other people. Oh, the church is guilty. My God. The church is guilty. When someone walks in with not a decency of shower, the church knows how to look down yeah. her nose. Mm. When someone comes in and looks like they've, they've slept on the street all night, the church knows how to look down her nose at them. But let me tell you, you can't look down your nose at anybody else because their sin is different from your sin. It's not that you haven't sinned, it's just that their sin is different from your sin. In the hand of God. Going to church on Sunday. Paying tithes, I mean returning tithes. Uh, going to Sunday school. Going to Bible study. Going to BPPU, going to BTU, go, going to the women's ministry, going to men's ministry, in the hand of God. We know we're in God's hand. Other folk know we're in the heart, hand of God, but we still have problems. Yeah. And we won't get rid of those problems until Jesus comes back. Yeah. We are imperfect. We, we, are, we are those that are found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 where it says when this earthly tabernacle is dissolved down here, we have another building not made by hand, eternal in the heavens. And we rejoice because of it. But you got to keep reading the verse. The verse says that the text declares that our spirit groans to leave here. We, we're waiting to leave here. We are groaning to, to meet our maker on the other side. When things are going on around us, sometimes we say, God, come quickly. Yes. God, come now. Yes. If you keep reading Jeremiah, mm -hmm. chapter 18, you will find out why Jeremiah had to take a trip to the potter's house. Mm -hmm. 
When Jeremiah had to take a trip to the potter's house, he didn't just, God didn't just tell him to go to the potter's house just to see what the potter is doing. The reason why Jeremiah had to take a trip to the potter's house is because his enemies was pressing him. His enemies was all about him. And as you finish reading that chapter, you will see Jeremiah talking to God. And he said, God, kill them off. He said, God, make sure that their, their wives become widows. He said, God, take their lives. It's because the preacher was going through something at the time. It's because his enemy was on his back. They were lying on him. They were backbiting against him. They were mistreating him. But Jeremiah knew where to run. He ran to God. I want to tell you today, you need to know where to run when you get in trouble. You need to know where to run when you get in trouble. You need to know that when you get in trouble, God is available to you. You need to know where to run when you get in trouble. We are marred. Even the one that's talking to you, we are marred. We messed up. Sin has, has left a scar. We have war wounds all about us. And yet we are in the hands of God. My next point to you is, don't get out of God's hands. You better stay right there. <laughs> as messed up as you are, a lot of times folks quit church because they got problems. A lot of times the people turn their back on God because they got problems. Many times they raise their fish at God and, and tell God, you didn't do what I asked you to do, God. I'm upset with you. I'm mad at you. My advice to you this morning is stay in the hands of God. Stay with God. Stay in his hand as messed up as you are. Stay with God. You see, we go to the hospital because we're sick. We go to the doctor because we want to be healed. God is a great physician. He's the one that heals us. He's the one that keeps us. He's the one that keeps our mind. Even what you're thinking right now, whether you're thinking about Mexican food, Spanish style, or you're thinking about soul food, God is the one that keeps your mind. We got to stay in God's hand. When you're in good hands, it's not with all state. You're in good hands with God. You're in good hands. Now, now you, can't, you can't have the Burger King effect with God. You can't have it your way. You got to do it God's way. You're in good hands with God. When you're in God's hand, you're in good hands with God. Stay in God's hands. So he made it again into another vessel. God knows how to make you over again. God knows how to make you different. When you walk through your neighborhood now and you hang around with the guys and the girls you used to hang out with, they ought to say, there's something different about you. And I don't care how quiet you were in high school, junior high, how quiet you were growing up. They ought to notice a distinct difference about you. They ought to know where you go is different. They ought to know how you speak is different. They ought to know your, your persona is different. They ought to know your character is different. Because when you've been with God, it reflects God all around you. Some of them will even tell you, you got a glow about you. Like never before. Now, if you walk up and they're doing their thing and they offer you some, you better check yourself. If you, if you walk up and they say, man, take a hit of this, and they're holding their fingers like this, you better, you better check. Your, your, your personality has not arrived. Your, your, your witness has not been strong enough. You got to make sure that you stay in the hands of God because God can make you another vessel. Amen. He says that the clay came marred, became marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. I want to close today by saying to you that God has the last word with your life. I want to tell you that you think you got it together. You think you've grown enough to control your life. God has the last word with your life. 
I, I'm reminded. I'm, I'm reminded of a human, a, a human impression of that. Mm -hmm. I go home to mom. In April, I'll be 60 years old. I go to her house. And she tells me when to crack the door, when to shut the door, when to turn the alarm on, when to turn it off. It's because she has control. Even at age 60, she has control of my life. And do does not apologize for it. She doesn't apologize for it. She tells me now, grown man with my own money, not asking her for anything, got a wife and children, been gone since 16, and she's still telling me what to do. All right. All right. You know that's a problem. <laughs> and I'm scared today to even tell her to her face that's a problem. <laughs> Let me show you another one, young people. She can drive or fly 600 miles, come to my house. I'm grown, been grown a long time, and tell me what to do. Brother Irvin, in my house. Now, anybody else, I'll let them know. This is my house, we don't do that in my house, we don't do that. We don't say that in my house, but mama says what mama wants to say. All right. Mama does what mama wants to do, and she acts what mama wants to act. And I have nothing to say. It's because mama controls things mm, yeah. when she is in my presence. Yeah. Yeah. How much more does God have control All right, over your life? All right. All right. How much more will you respect God enough to allow God to control your whole life. I just want to tell you, we have different shape bowls. And one bowl represents you and the other bowl represents somebody else. Regardless of the color of the bowl, the potter made it just like he wanted. Regardless of the size of the bowl, the potter made it just like he wanted. The text declares that the potter forms you as a vessel in a way he wants to, and he chooses what he wants to do with you. Let me tell you something. God has made your life everything that it is. Matter of fact, God has it planned out for you. God sees your future before you get there. God has shaped you. Girl, stop getting so upset because you're not a size zero. Stop getting upset because you're not a light color. Stop getting upset because your lips are not shaped like everybody else's lips. And your buttocks is, is shaped better than them. Don't you know they're spending a lot of money to get lips like yours, to get buttocks like yours, to get skin tone like yours? Appreciate what God has done with you. When I pick this bowl up to eat out of it, it doesn't matter what color it is. When I pick this bowl up to scoop out of it, it doesn't matter whether it's dark or light. We have to understand that God has beautifully and wonderfully made us. Great is the handiworks of God. This I know right well. God has blessed us to be different shapes, different colors, different sizes. That's the beauty of life. The beauty of life. The beauty of life is God has created us differently. What if everybody in the world looked like you, act like you, thought like you? My God. It would be a boring world. Yeah. All right. But God in his divine wisdom bless you to be who you are. Yeah. And make sure you remember who you are. Right. Tell God, God make me over. When I'm going down the wrong road, God make me over. When I'm acting a fool and climbing up fool's hill, God make me over. God is able to make you over because over 2,000 years ago, he made it possible for you to be made over. How did he do it, preacher? He took his own and he got his son. His name is Jesus. God is able to make you over again. Over 2,000 years ago. God gave his son. Yeah. His son gave his life yeah. on 
a skull hill called Calvary over 2,000 years ago. God made us over. We were on our way to hell. Had no God on our side, but God made us over. He took Jesus. Jesus reached up and caught the holy hand of God. Reached down and caught the unholy hand of man. He died on Calvary. Yes, he did. He was making us over again. He, he was making us just like we needed to be. God made us over, over 2,000 years ago. Jesus died on Calvary. Mean men killed him. Mean men hung him. Mean men dropped him. Mean men stretched him. He died on Calvary. He died on Calvary. Jesus died on Calvary. He died on Calvary. He didn't go to sleep on Calvary. He died on Calvary. They took him off the cross. They took him off a cross and laid him in Joseph's brand new tomb. It, that Joseph of Arimathea gave up his tomb. A, a tomb that has never been slept in. A tomb that has never been laid in. Joseph gave Jesus his brand new tomb. They made my Lord in a brand new tomb. He died on Calvary. They laid him in a tomb. They made my rock. They laid him on a rock. They surrounded him with a rock. They enclosed him with a rock. But my rock of ages, Jesus himself, early that third day morning, while the grave thought he had him, while death thought he could keep him, early that third day morning, he got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hands. He rose with all power. Thank God for Jesus. And that's why I say, God made me over. God made me different. God made me over. I surrender unto you. Lord, make me over. Make me a new person. I don't like who I am. God, make me over. That same Jesus that rose that third day morning, he caught a cloud and got out of here. It wasn't a limousine. It was not a Jaguar. It was not a Mitsubishi. It was not a GMC. That same Jesus caught a cloud. He got out of here. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father. And every time I get barred, every time I mess up, if I'm faithful to confess my sin, he's faithful and he's just to intercede for me and forgive me of my sin. That same Jesus is making intercessions for me, sitting on the right hand of the Father. But one of these days, we don't know when and we don't know where, but one of these days, at the trump of God, at the voice of the archangel, Jesus himself will crack the sky and the dead in Christ shall rise first and those of us who remain will be caught up with him. We're going to be caught up with him. Caught up with him in midair. And the Bible says we will forever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. If the music is too loud down here, you better get ready. Because every day going to be Sunday. And the sun, the S-O-N will shine. There will be no room for the S-U-N. The Son of God will light up the city. I'm going to a city where the streets are paved with gold. I'm going to a city where there's no more crying. And no more dying. I'm going through the city where there's no more backbiting. I'm going to the city where there's no more lying. Over yonder, we're going to celebrate. We're going to thank God for where he brought us. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. We glorify you. We magnify you. We praise your name, Lord. For you are good. For your mercy. And do it forever. We're going to thank him over there. For making us over. Some writers said, how I got over? How I got over? My soul looks back and wonders. How 
got over it. I know how I got over it. It wasn't with my degree. It wasn't my smart self. It wasn't because I was born to Matthews and Rose and David. It's because of Jesus. He thought enough to reach in the ghetto and pour me out and welcome me to heaven. Hallelujah to the light. I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You need to come to Jesus. Just as you are. Don't wait till you get it right. You'll never get it right. You gotta trust Jesus. He can get it right for you. If you never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity to guarantee yourself a place in heaven. The Bible teaches that we live in this tabernacle. We live in this tent. And every now and then, wind blows on this tent. Every now and then, water gets in the tent. Every now and then, high blood pressure. That's what I tell you. Every now and then, heart attacks, cancer, Mars out tip. But I want to tell you today, we got another building on the other side. You can secure your reservation today. You can be born again. If you haven't received them, just bow your head with me and invite him in right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me, me a new person. Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe that you honestly pray this prayer that you're now born again and you're on your way to heaven. We believe that you are on your way, your way to heaven. And since you're on your way to heaven, you need to be in a good Bible teaching church that preaches and teaches the word of God. Since you're on your way to heaven, you need to be in a church where Jesus is the captain of the ship. Where Jesus is the main attraction. Where Jesus is the, is the one that we look forward to seeing. I recommend the New Beginning Church. I recommend the New Beginning Church for, for safekeeping. For the word of God. You can be a member whether you are global or locally located. You can get to know Jesus and you need a church home. Foxes have holes. Birds in the air have nests. That's their home. Every person needs a church home. Every person needs a good church home. Every person needs a good pastor. Every person needs a good feeder that will be fed the word of God. If this is you and you're watching us from a distance, inbox us and let us know that you want to be a part of this great church in Southeast Houston. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for making us over again. We thank you for blessing us. Lord, we thank you for your mercy, your grace. God, we ask you to keep us 
and bless us to be beacon lights for others to see. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. It is offering time. It is offering time. I said it's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It's a privilege to be able to give unto the Lord. It's a privilege to be able to give to the Lord. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. If you need an envelope, there's a white and a white and blue envelope. There's one right here, Hazel. Right here. There's a white and blue envelope for your tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. And there's a white and red envelope for a pastor's love offering. You can choose either of the two or both. We thank God for you participating and returning tithes and offerings back to the Lord. We believe that tithes and offerings ought to be returning back to the Lord at your home church where you're being fed, where God is blessing you. And if you're visiting with us, feel free to give a gift while you're here. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to give. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us. We thank you, Father, for all you have done with us financially. We pray that you bless every giver. Bless every person. Bless every gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you want to give electronically, you can give by way of mail. Our mail account. Our mail account is lifting God. Quiet it down, guys. Our mail account is lifting God Jesus at Yahoo.com. Lifting God Jesus at Yahoo.com. Or you can mail in your gift by P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. 77459. You're in the hands of first impressions. Oh God, Thanks from Pastor and Sister David. Amen. Amen. 
Hello, special thanks from Sister Davis and Pastor Davis. Uh, on last week, you all were just wonderful and we're just here to just thank you so much for just showing us so much love on last week. You all gave us prayers, your words of encouragement. Thank you so much for your gift cards. I have gift cards galore. So I am going to be shopping, shopping, shopping. So thank you all so much for that. I really appreciate that. And I thank the, the children for their presentation, their tribute. Very, very nice. The so boys and girls, just keep on working for the Lord, okay? Keep on working for the Lord. You're not working for Sister Davis. You're working for the Lord. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for being the greatest, the greatest church in the world. Amen. God has called me to this point for this time, for such a time as this. And thank you for not allowing me to take a walk. When one is leading and no one's following, then he's just taking a walk. So thank you so much for, for being here. And we're looking forward to, to uh, getting the rest of our members back in church. Amen. Amen. So you call somebody. Put on your list five people that you can call. So when our visitors show up, they won't be looking around and say, where do I sit? Because I can sit anywhere. <laughs> Amen. So, so whatever you do, put five people on your list so you can so you can you can call and um, recruit them. And I have something else to say. I especially want to thank Sister Hughes, yes. Brother Alfred, yes. Sister Cora, and Sister Darrington. Thank you so much for the choir tribute. It really, really touched my heart. So thank you all so much for just working with us. And also Sophia. Thank you, Sophia. It's really coming along. She's going to take my place one day. And I'm going to be so glad about that. <laughs> so glad about that. And then on a different note, um, we are trying to get children saved. With the world like it is now, so you all, if you know of, of children that are not in church, you know, the parents are not taking them to church, talk to the parents and get the children to come. We're trying to draw the children through the music, get them here through music, and then tell them about God and get them saved. So thank you so much. Amen. Amen. And so we have robotics, we have hydroponics, acupunics. Look it up if you don't know. Acupunics and hydroponics is when you grow vegetables by using fish and water. So uh, we want, uh, I think, two of the children here. Stand if you're doing hydroponics and acupunics. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And which one of y'all want to tell us what acupunics and hydroponics is? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hydroponics and aquaponics is like when you grow vegetables and fish and uh, while using, uh, while you can grow things in an aquarium while having fish in the tank wow. is basically what it is. It's really fun. Yes. Right. Yeah. Jacob is from the church where Sister Hughes is and uh, and we appreciate them coming, and thank you. You want to say something now, huh? <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Sister Hughes, for involving them in, in ministry, and, and he's our drama also. Let's give the drama song. <laughs> Amen. So again, thank you so much for, for last week, uh, 18 years that we have been on this journey together. I said 18 years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for, for 18 years. Thank you for being a group of special people. And we've gone through some things together. And God has kept us together. Amen. And when uh, other things had to shut down, God kept us. And thank you for, for trusting me for the leadership that God has, has placed here. So again, thank you so much. Let's keep doing the things that, that we have to do for the Lord. Our visitors, if you're visiting with us for the first time, will you please stand for the first time? Oh, we got some first time visitors. 
Well, we, will the three of you come on up um, during our Black History Heritage Week? One of the people, one of the persons that I sponsored was the great Lamique. The great, do you all remember Lamique? Lamique. This is Miss Lamique. I'm going to ask her to tell us more. Thank you so much, um, Pastor Davis and Sister Davis, uh, who has known me since I was my daughter's age, seven years old, mm -hmm. Loretta, who was here, um, and my husband, Roscoe. So Lamique Beauty is a clean color cosmetic brand. So we really specialize in taking out parabens and talc out of their makeup and making it safer for us to use because 75% of beauty products marketed to us are toxic. And so we make it right by Intercontinental Airport, by George Bush Airport. We make it right in that area, and we sell it on Ulta.com, which is the largest beauty specialty retailer in the country. And we also spoke, sell it with JCPenney, as well as our own website. And um, my uh, piano teacher, Miss Davis, she wears it too. So uh, she's, isn't she beautiful? Come on, give it up for her beauty now. Now for her to look like this, when I was seven years old, she still looked the same. <laughs> Some of that is genetics, right? Um, uh, but then also, Lamique is there. So we're so excited and we also help to raise money for breast cancer and this church has been a part of that as well. So thank you so much uh, for what this church is doing in our community, for our community, Amen. with our community. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> That's Mr. Lamique right there. <laughs> Lamique wouldn't be Lamique without Mr. Lamique. Amen. So thank you so much. And uh, you know, Chris won the Chris received the Servant of the Year Award. And this this is her daughter and her granddaughter that, that she talked about all last week. Uh, I told you Chris was the blackest white woman I ever seen. <laughs> she is that. And that's her son-in-law, so we're, we're so glad that they've come to fellowship and her daughter has now joined our music ministry here and we're so glad about it. Sister it. Davis is, is of age now. She's, she's, she's in the fifth generation of musicians. She's in the fifth generation of musicians. So, so she's really growing up. She's really, she's really, really growing up now. So we thank God for, for them continuing the legacy. While we stand to our feet to be dismissed, we want to talk about our, our mission and, and vision statement. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. Father God, we thank you now. We honor you, we bless you, we praise your name. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us that you are making us over. Bless us, Father God, to submit ourselves unto you. Bless us to be about your business and do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Lord, we thank you for our youth and our young people. We ask you to bless them, Father God. We ask you to anoint them for your service and go with them and walk with them. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us say, Amen. We want to thank God for the urban clan, the urbans are in the house, raise your hand if you're urban. Uh, this young man in the, in the blue and white is the, is the husband to Sister Lou Irvin. Amen. So thank you all so much for being here. And his sister has returned again today. Thank you so much. You are dismissed.